it is 10 o'clock at night. I have got to get up at 3 in the morning to get up and go work an overtime shift on a military base. But I'm awake and I'm here recording this video. And why is that? It's because, of course, I promised you we would be here at least two, if not three times every week. So here we are shooting another episode of Story Vault. And you're not even going to subscribe, are you? Unbelievable. Be better. But no, seriously, when I came across this story, I knew I had to cover it because it's actually one of the most unbelievable things I've ever come across on the internet. So, not trying to waste any more of your time, let's get into the story of Ron Hunt. The story of Ron Hunt actually takes us to the biggest little city in the world. That is, of course, Reno, Nevada. Now, I personally actually live about 70 miles outside of Reno, Nevada, so it's actually going to be weird. I'm actually going to Reno tomorrow, and it's going to be weird driving by Reno and seeing all of the new construction, which there's been a lot of new construction in Reno in the last couple of years, and to think about this story, because this really is one of the most unbelievable stories I've ever come across. But our story takes us back to August of 2003, and there was a guy named Ron Hunt, and he was working on a construction crew. And this construction crew had been hired to build a house in Reno. And one day, as they were working on this project, building this house in Reno, Ron got up early and went with one of his co-workers named Forrest. They went up to the job site early, before everybody else had shown up for the day, just to get an early jump on the day and to get some work done. So when they showed up on this job site, it was just Ron and Forrest there on the job site. And they kind of knew exactly what they were going to be doing. And they were working on different areas of the house, kind of working on different projects. So after they got their tool belts on and get everything that they needed, Forrest went over to this part of the house and started doing his work. And Ron went over to this other spot in the house and started doing his work. And what Ron was going to do is he was going to go into the, one of the rooms of this house and he was going to drill some holes in the ceiling of this room. This is a super common thing for construction workers to do when they're building a house, when it's like in fabrication. They've got to drill holes in the ceilings and in the walls in order to run plumbing and wire up through the roof. That way, when they put all of the sheetrock and finishing on it, everything in the house functions and works as it should. So for Ron, this was an easy task that he had probably done hundreds of times in his career as a construction worker. So he grabs a stepladder, he grabs his drill, and he grabs some other tools, and he heads over to this room to start doing his work. And at first, everything goes perfectly smoothly. He grabs the stepladder, and he puts it here, and then he grabs his drill, and he puts on the drill bit, and he goes to the top of the stepladder, and he starts to drill the holes that he needs into the ceiling. And then he would drill a couple of holes, and then he would get down, he would move the stepladder to a different spot in the room, and he would go back up, and he would drill more holes, and he was just kind of minding his own business and getting about his work, early on in the morning. It's always kind of nice to get to work a little bit early and get started on your things that you have to do before the hustle and bustle of all of the crew showing up. And so a little bit of time went on as Ron continued drilling these holes that he needed in the ceiling. And then at some point, Ron climbs down the ladder and he moves the ladder to a different spot in the house and he goes back up and he starts to drill. But this time, as he's drilling into the ceiling, his drill gets stuck. Like before, on the other parts when he was drilling, it had been really easy to just drill right through the floor and to get these holes done. But at this specific spot, something was stuck. Maybe there was a knot in the wood, or maybe there was something above him that was stopping him from being able to punch the drill through. But as Ron thought to himself, he thought about what was above him, and he really didn't think, like, there shouldn't be anything above him. Like, it was probably just a knot in the wood, and he probably just had to push a little bit harder. But as he was on the ladder pushing, he couldn't really use his arm strength to push the drill in. So frustrated, he brings the drill down, he kind of puts it down on his tool belt, and then he walks up the ladder, and he gets to that spot on the ladder that you're never, ever supposed to be on. It was the kind of top of the ladder where there's the hinge that holds the back and the front of the ladder together, it was like that plastic piece on the top. And so as Ron was standing on the top of this ladder, this gave him the leverage that he needed because he could kind of push up with his legs and push up with his arms and really get the drill in there to get this whole drill. And so one more time, Ron pulls the trigger of the drill and the drill bit starts to spin and it starts to go into the wood and he really puts his weight into it and starts to drill this hole. And right as he's starting to feel the drill go into the wood, what Ron doesn't realize is as he's pushing the drill in and pushing down with his legs, 
his legs were pushing at kind of an angle. And everyone knows the reason it says do not step on those ladders is because when you're up there, it's really easy for the ladders to tip over if there's any kind of pressure that's not directly down. If the pressure's directly down, the ladder will stay up no problem. But as soon as there's any pressure to the left or to the right, it's really easy for those ladders to tip over. But Ron wasn't really thinking about this as he's drilling the hole and his legs are pushing to the right angle. So all of a sudden, with no warning, as he's drilling this hole, all of a sudden the ladder just gives out from underneath him. And so as the ladder fell out beneath him, Ron let go of the drill and kind of put his hands out as he began to fall face down. But when he did so, the drill fell right in front of him with the drill bit facing point up. It kind of fell right out of the ceiling and landed underneath him as Ron fell face first off of that eight foot ladder. And so as Ron fell face down with the drill in front of him, his eye socket connected perfectly with the drill bit that was sticking up out of the drill and the force of his body hitting the ground forced the drill bit all the way through his skull and it broke through his skull on the back side of his head. And surprisingly, this didn't kill Ron and it didn't even knock him unconscious. He just kind of fell onto the drill and then he kind of sat up and he is holding the drill in his hand and he feels to the back of his head and he feels the drill bit sticking out of the back of his head and then he feels and he feels it going into his eye. So he knows that this drill has gone all the way through his skull and obviously this just completely freaks him out and Ron just begins screaming at the top of his lungs. And of course, when Ron started screaming, his coworker Forrest ran over to see what was going on. And as soon as Forrest looked and saw what had happened, he immediately turned around and he ran down the hill about a thousand feet and went to the nearest neighbor's house. And when he got there, he was able to use their phone to call 911. And then he ran back up to be with Ron as they waited for the paramedics to come. And when the paramedics got there, they were able to disattach the drill from the drill bit. They didn't take the drill bit out of his head, obviously, but they were able to disattach the drill. And then Ron was loaded up in this ambulance with this 18 inch drill bit still sticking through his head. And they would transport him over to renowned medical center in Reno. And as soon as they got Ron to the hospital, they obviously took him directly into surgery. And at first, the surgeons didn't really know what to do. They thought maybe they could cut the drill bit on one side or the other, but then obviously this guy would still have this rod through his head. And I'm sure this isn't one of those things that they just teach you in medical school. Like, this is what to do when somebody gets a drill bit stuck through their head. Because as far as I know, this doesn't often happen to people. And so after discussing it for a little bit and deciding what to do, the surgeons decide that their only course of action would be to twist the drill bit and get it to unscrew out of Ron's head. And so they gave Ron a bunch of morphine and a bunch of painkillers. And then while Ron was even conscious, they slowly over the course of some time began to slowly twist the drill bit out of his head and unscrew it from the eyeball all the way out until eventually the drill bit was removed. And after the surgery was over, the doctors would tell Ron that when the drill bit had gone into his eye and out his skull, as it had passed through, it had actually moved his brain to the side and just gone through like an empty pocket. It actually didn't go through his brain and didn't cause any brain damage. But if that drill bit had been at a slightly different angle or had been slightly over at any different position whatsoever, there was a good chance it would have gone directly through his brain and almost certainly killed him. And if not, definitely would have caused severe crippling brain damage. But as it was, Ron didn't really have any injuries other than of course he lost his eyesight in that one eye. Have you ever had a near death experience like Ron's? Go down in the comments right now and let me know your story. And if it's as crazy as this one, you better know I will cover it on this channel. Until then, if you have made it to this point, go down in the comments and type the number seven. Not only is this totally going to confuse all of the nerds who didn't make it this far, but it's also going to show me that you're one of the real ones on StoryWorld. Until then, thank you for watching. Be safe out there.